Hi all, uh, welcome to the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach SIC meeting. Today is April 15th and we are doing a special session about organizing uh, Jenkins community events. Um, just to share some context, um, yeah, we had some changes in the organization. Um, uh, Mark Jackson, the previous event officer, has stepped down. I'm an uh, acting event officer. My name is Oleg Nashev. I'm also Jenkins Governance Board member. Um, and we actually looking for some help because in Jenkins we organize a lot of community events, uh, meetups, hackathons, etc. And for all these events, yeah, they require some contribution to uh, make them happen. And hence we uh, launched a public call uh, in the community, inviting people to join uh, and uh, contribute to events, uh, organizing, hosting, logistics. And uh, the today's session is basically the first uh, onboarding session where we have these discussions. Um, so this is an open session. Uh, you can interrupt me at any time, ask any questions. I still have prepared a short slide deck, but uh, yeah, the main objective of today is the discussion. Um, just a second, I'll share my screen. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll uh, share slides uh, right away. So, yeah, there are some links in the slide, but yeah, you can just uh, take a look. Okay, um, from the call participants, who has ever participated in Jenkins Online Meetup or other local uh, Meetup about Jenkins? I'm sure that Olivia has participated in a few events as well. Okay. You okay. organized some as well? Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, um, let's just talk. So I will do a really quick introduction. Uh, then um, I will do a review of uh, events uh, we are doing. Uh, then I will uh, talk about how to contribute and the way we need contributions. And then we will have open discussions on discussion about anything. Uh, for meeting notes, uh, we have uh, various uh, open documents, basically every Jenkins special interest group and uh, sub-project, uh, they have a kind of uh, public track of the discussions. So today I decided to use advocacy and outreach meeting notes document. So if you want to put any notes, etc., uh, please put them here because then uh, they will be shared. And of course we will publish a recording as well. So, yeah, uh, Jenkins community has uh, around 5,000 uh, contributors. Mm, it's uh, the number we had uh, in 2020 based on GitHub. Uh, it includes cont contributions, reviews, comments, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, in Jenkins, contributions are not just about code because Jenkins is a huge project. It's been used in various areas. And uh, one of the important areas for us is to actually uh, share experiences, uh, share knowledge about uh, Jenkins, and uh, for that we use various activities, including online events. And uh, we also have uh, quite a number of contributors uh, helping with this areas. And uh, yeah, it's a really important part uh, of the Jenkins community because uh, without that we wouldn't be able to have so many users, we wouldn't be able to have so much documentation, various videos published on the internet about Jenkins. And uh, yeah, we encourage everyone to participate. Uh, participate. So, if you have never seen uh, this page before, I'll stop the stop stopping for all screen for now. So, we have a page Jenkins slash participate. Uh, this page uh, lists uh, common types of contribution, including how to code, how to contribute to documentation, how to design, artwork, localizations, and just helping users. Today, we are talking rather about meet section. This section uh, is not well detailed, I would say, but this section uh, basically talks about the events we have um, and how to contribute. How to contribute is basically, please, please reach out to advocacy and outreach seek. And yeah, the, today's session is just one step to actually improve uh, this documentation and to provide more materials for contributors. So it will be updated later. Um, so, 
In Jenkins, we have advocacy and outreach special interest group. This special interest group focuses basically on various kinds of outreach and uh, sharing knowledge. So we focus on multiple areas, just organizing online events about what we're talking today. We also focus on uh, onboarding contributors, uh, for example, code committers, organizing special programs like hackathons or coordinating events. For example, uh, maybe you participated in Hacktoberfest and the Jenkins project will also participate in Hacktoberfest on a regular basis and uh, this week is working on that. And basically, almost all the events are coordinated under the umbrella of advocacy and outreach special interest group. So this special interest group, um, okay. so I wouldn't actually uh, take into consideration uh, the list of members because it's a legacy on the Jenkins website. Um, but yeah, what we have, we have a mailing list, we have a regular chat for the contributors, and we also have uh, regular meetings every two weeks. So for example, the next uh, meet meeting will happen next Thursday. And yeah, so you can find that, um, yeah, uh, there are some ongoing discussions here. And there is also a chat in Gitter where which you can join and uh, discuss any topics related to Jenkins events, etc. And yeah, actually uh, what I wanted to say that yeah, really Jenkins needs you because um, organizing events is an important part, uh, especially when we talk about uh, local events, local meetups, etc. There are a lot of opportunities, but all of that depends on the contributors because uh, the entire Jenkins project is driven by volunteers and um, any contribution matters for us. Okay, so speaking about events, what do we do? One of the key events is Jenkins online meetups. Uh, then uh, you have Jenkins area long and CIC meetups, basically local events. We organize conferences, we organize outreach programs. And we do some bits in addition to that, but uh, these are four main types of events we handle. And uh, I'm going to uh, dive into uh, these event types. Before that, are there any questions, comments? And let's continue. Okay, so Jenkins Online Meetup. Uh, right now, I would say that it's uh, one of the main events we organize because everything went online uh, and Jenkins project is no exception. So the Jenkins Online Meetup um, is uh, a regular, well, not so regular, but uh, um, uh, quite consistent uh, event. Uh, so. If you go to meetup.com, there is a page for Jenkins Online Meetup. And uh, there we organize events uh, at least every month. Uh, by now, we had 47 uh, online meetups. Um, uh, they target um, users and contributors. For example, we can have a meetup where Jenkins users share, share so their war story. Sometimes you have uh, contributors coming and talking about new features, for example, new Jenkins core releases. Uh, on new features being produced, and sometimes we organize events for contributors like uh, developer meetups. All of that happens on this platform. Um, so right now you can see that there is no announced meetups except uh, three conferences, uh, which are about to happen um, in June. And uh, well, there will be a post event, a Jenkins Contributor Summit, um, about which we can uh, talk later. Uh, but yeah, we actually plan to organize uh, a few meetups soon. And this is uh, currently uh, our main uh, program. Uh, so we have a platform for meetups uh, sponsored by the Continuous Delivery Foundation. So we can uh, host um, up to 500 participants in Zoom. We uh, usually record these sessions, publish them on our YouTube channel, um, promote uh, through social media, we also control. And um, yeah, it helps uh, us um, a lot uh, to share information about Jenkins. Um, so these online uh, meetups, again, uh, they are organized and hosted by volunteers. For example, me, Mark, who is on the call, uh, we hosted quite a number of meetups. Olivia has presented uh, uh, Jenkins release automation infrastructure in August, if I recall correctly. And yeah, again, we want uh, these meetups to happen, but to do that, yeah, we need speakers, we need uh, hosts, and uh, it's uh, one of the areas where everyone could can contribute. For local events, well, so right now there is uh, no local events in terms of offline events. Uh, there is a Jenkins area meetup program. 
um, at the best times we had something like a, if I recall correctly, 60 or 70 uh, meetups around the world. Um, you know, for example, uh, there's a meetups in different cities uh, in Europe, in the United States, uh, in India, in Australia, in Africa. Right now, uh, almost all these events are inactive because of coronavirus, uh, and uh, we rather target uh, online events. At the same time, it's still important to have local online events, for example, in national languages, because um, there is a lot of uh, people who don't speak English or who prefer to still maintain a local community. And this is, again, a good opportunity to contribute. So, for example, in your city, Jenkins is quite popular. Uh, yeah, it still has more than 50% of the market in CICD and automation. So, most likely in your city, there are hundreds or thousands of developers using Jenkins who would be interested to participate in the meetup. And it's a good opportunity to build a local communities. So, for example, I'm um, uh, the leader of St. Petersburg Jenkins Meetup, of uh, Swiss Jenkins Meetup. And in St. Petersburg Jenkins Meetup, we have something 3,000 participants by now. Um, yeah, again, the um, last event we hosted was in October, um, but we yeah, plan to host another one. And um, these events um, are quite active, but uh, they need people on the ground. So, usually, when you want to organize something, we recommend to just do it in your city. And we are happy to help. For example, the Continuity Delivery Foundation provides us with a platform which everyone can use. So you don't need to spend time on that. As a Jenkins community, we can help with uh, promoting the event. Uh, we, uh, we can also sponsor swag for the event, like stickers, etc. So yeah, we are happy to help with that. And uh, we would be really happy if there were more local events happening nowadays. Because uh, right. that one. Oh, like I, I the local as an example of a local event that had an impressive attendance. You spoke, you and I spoke at Code for Cause, um, and and there were what a hundred plus that attended that session, and there have been thousands of views of that thing. So, in particular, in different time zones, I think that this kind of this kind of organizing a meetup is very very powerful. Yeah, right. So in this case, uh, Mark talks about uh, the event uh, which was in English, but it was conducted basically on the platform quite popular in India. Uh, so Code for Cause is uh, organized by several contributors. Uh, they have something like 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Just a second. I'm trying to remember the interface again. Okay. So, yeah. Basically, the recording is here because we were talking about contributing to Jenkins. Um, but yeah, so it was quite a big event for us. And uh, yeah, such events, not necessarily uh, hosted by the Jenkins community, they are still quite important for us. So if you just want to share the work about Jenkins, if you want to present any use cases, basically you can go to any local meetup uh, or to podcast. And again, we will be happy to help with that. Uh, my voice is a little low. Sorry, it becomes a common comment these days. I'm not sure what's happening with these headphones. Okay. So, okay, I'll uh, try to speak louder. So for the rest of the events, what we have, so conferences, again, all conferences are rather online. We do not encourage local events at the moment. Still, there are many conferences we participate in. So, for example, CDCon, the next CDCon will happen in June. DevOps World, uh, former Jenkins World, um, it will happen in September. Fosdom has happened uh, in February uh, this year. Scale got unfortunately cancelled, but historically we uh, participated in this event. And um, there are other conferences where Jenkins Project has official representation. So, for example, we have a booth. We host our sessions like Piotr Pisa, Ask the Experts workshops, and various other collocated events. And um, again, um, in the case of this event, we need contributors on the ground or online uh, who are interested to dedicate their time and uh, uh, to organize these events, to coordinate, and 
it's a good opportunity. Also, there are many industry-specific events. For example, in my case, I usually go to hardware-embedded conferences. And again, there is a lot of opportunities to talk about Jenkins there. For outreach programs, uh, we have, we again participate a lot because uh, one of our objectives of advocacy and outreach seek is to actually uh, grow contributor numbers, uh, increase visibility of the project. So we try to participate in uh, common programs. For example, right now there is Google Summer, of course, starting. Uh, for Jenkins, it will be fifth year when we participate. We also participated in outreach. We participate in Hacktoberfest every year. Um, we have our own program. Yeah, its website needs to be updated. So it's now called LFX Mentorship. Um, but yeah, we have our account on this platform and we have hosted the project. And yeah, also Google Season of Dogs. Um, we participated last year and hopefully we'll be accepted this year. Uh, there are many other local um, and um, remote events. And again, uh, every way we're interested uh, uh, to have some Jenkins representation. So for example, if, if there is an event in your country, like uh, Hacker Garden or whatever, if you want uh, to organize something and to basically just get together about Jenkins, it's a good opportunity to do that. Okay, what else do I have here? Okay, actually, how to help? I mentioned a few examples, um, but yeah, what we really need at the moment um, is organizers, because any event, if you want it to happen, uh, there is a lot of like, work to be done. Uh, for example, just organizing the event, announcing that, uh, hosting that, moderating that. And of course, uh, there is also a lot of logistics to happen, because if you want to have an event, we need to announce it. So just uh, to show you a few examples. So yeah, there are some meetup pages. Uh, um, yeah, can attribute in Jenkins and uh, Google Summer of Code. This is a presentation we were doing with Mark together a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so also had quite a number of attend. Yes, we also have social media. So for example, if you go to um, LinkedIn or if you go to um, uh, Twitter, uh, there are Jenkins accounts there, again, uh, led by advocacy and outreach seek, and uh, there are um, various announcements, promotion of existing events, not necessarily hosted by Jenkins, for example, there is today's uh, repost for podcast with one of Jenkins contributors, and if you scroll down, you can see that there is various content, but we also announce events there. Um, and it means that if you just see an event uh, which we have missed, um, it's a good opportunity to um, share information so that we can publish that and uh, promote that so that again it gets more traction. Same for the Jenkins website. So here you can see that we announce some events on the front page. For example, um, Shikot Africa Contribute on. It's a program which is happening now. Um, and there are several mentors from the Jenkins project. Yeah, GSOC again something to update. Jenkins is the way it's ongoing outreach program uh, where we basically try to collect uh, feedback from users, uh, their work stories in exchange for cool t-shirts and stickers. And um, yeah, again, it's um, under the umbrella of advocacy and outreach C. And we try to promote uh, these events here. And again, CDCon, uh, yeah, generic uh, thing uh, for contributing. So right now, all, all the major news are about events actually. We have uh, our own event calendar, so it's uh, Jenkins IO events, and we again uh, we announce events there, we add them to the Jenkins community newsletters, mm, and uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation, our umbrella organization, also adds them to the, the newsletters. So there is a lot of such uh, content uh, here and there, which again needs to be maintained, it requires some contributing time. But at the same time, all, yeah, all of that um, are relatively small and atomic tasks. So for example, if you have 10 minutes per week or so, you still can help the project and it is still uh, much appreciated. What else uh, do we have? Of course, a lot of logistics uh, because again, uh, this events need coordination. We do announcements. We just uh, try to build uh, contributor teams. Sometimes uh, we have other objectives, for example, distributing schwag uh, to event participants, etc. And again, all these areas uh, need some contributing 
uh, the time from uh, volunteers. Not of uh, these activities, uh, not all of these activities are really exciting, uh, but yeah, again, uh, there is a big team, so we try to uh, load balance to that. And yeah, as volunteers, basically, you choose what you contribute to. So definitely, there won't be a manager who says what you do. Um, but yeah, if you are ready to help with any particular task, it will be much appreciated. So also staffing booths, contributing, uh, various design work, because again, for many events, we try to create something special. For example, if you go to Jenkins Southport, you can see that, uh, I'm not sure what I picked, but it definitely wasn't intended. Okay, so artwork. So here you can see that uh, there are various uh, uh, logos. Some of them have been created for meetups. So for example, for this is Austin meetup. This is uh, for Belgium uh, meetup Olivia organizes and uh, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. And again, if you just have an idea what could be done, et cetera, just let us know because yeah, all of uh, this content we also use uh, to raise up the project's visibility. And yeah, if you're interested to help, yeah. Again, Jenkins is a huge ecosystem with uh, thousands of different components, uh, basically uh, pretty much every technology we have on the market, etc. So if you have an idea how to contribute, you will definitely find something in Jenkins. Okay. And I guess that's all I had with regards to slides. So sorry if it took uh, longer than I planned. I just uh, wanted to provide the uh, 10,000 feet overview of uh, what we do. Oh, 30,000 feet, right? Okay, so, and now I would rather spend some time on introductions. So to discuss uh, what are you interested in and maybe I'll talk about uh, what are the specific areas you would like to focus on so that we could uh, deep dive into these topics. So maybe we could sh uh, start from short introductions then. Mark, Olivier, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm, I'm Mark Waite. I'm the Jenkins Documentation Officer and part of the, the Advocacy and Outreach SIG. And uh, happy to help. I'm actually going to be exercising exactly the steps that Oleg has been describing is I will be providing a pro proposing and Jenkins online meetup with Uli Hoffner sharing some of the things he does to do plug-in development setup for his students. And so I, I think the community will be will find it useful and interesting. And I'm planning to go through these steps. Um, in my case, my name is Olivier. Um, I'm the Jenkins infrastructure officer. So I coordinate every work related to infrastructure. So one of them was to deploy the Jenkins at your website. I'm also organizing a few events. I used to organize Jenkins Meetup um, in Belgium. I'm also organizing the CICD Dev Room at FOSEM, which is a major open source um, conference in Belgium as well. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad to help. If you have any question, uh, feel free to ask. Okay. So who's next? You can, you can go next. Okay. Do that. Hi everyone. So I'm new to this group. So I'm Marvind. I'm um, from India. So I've I've been mostly uh, you know, user of Jenkins for the six years, and uh, so I've extensively used it. I'm at I'm a DevSecOps a member in my organization. So I I saw the announcement, looking for contributors, you know, on the outreach program on LinkedIn. So I thought I would want to help. So I mean I. I would like to contribute. I don't know how, but uh, you know, I think this presentation gave me some structure. Uh, I might need some help. Uh, you know, I can work with some of you in your uh, organizing sessions and all. Also, get some like understanding how these things are done, and eventually, I can you know continue to. Uh, hello, everyone. Oops, yeah, so I am going to be a software engineer from Nigeria. Um, we currently use um, Jenkins at my workplace. 
and with different open source projects I contribute to. So I saw um, a tweet from Oleg that he was looking out for some contributors to the project and I'm very happy to contribute, especially um, from Africa. I think um, lots of Africans will benefit from this outreach program. So I'm happy to be here and to share in the process. Mm -hmm. Hi all, uh, I'm Vahram from Armenia. Uh, I'm an entry level developer. Uh, what can I, say? I like volunteering and have big experience in uh, different, uh, in organizing different uh, um, I can't remember the word. Uh, um, no worries. <laughs> Even events? What? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, events. Yeah, events. OK. And so I know that uh, Jenkins is very important uh, part of development. So I uh, decided that it will be useful to be involved in these processes and maybe learn something. Also, I know that volunteering is very cool. So. Um, I hope I will have fun here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, it's Imadri from India and I'm uh, in the open source community for quite a long time. As I started my career and learning from the open source community itself. So I have a love for the open source community itself. So, and I'm also a part of the open source community, OWSP uh, chapter here in Kolkata. I, I reside in the Kolkata. Uh, so uh, I love contributing in whatever way I can uh, as per my limitations. So I saw the post of contribution. So thought that it will be a great opportunity to learn from other persons who uh, organizing large events like Jenkins, DevOps Worlds, like that. I also attended DevOps Worlds as well. So, and it will be very interesting working with you all and uh, learning from each other's and uh, enhancing my knowledge as well. So, uh, that is the main interesting thing. <laughs> I love to contribute them whatever way you can. I can. And uh, first of all, I should. I think I have to uh, understand the concepts, the process of the organization, how it things works. And then and I think it would be a better way to contribute to the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. So that's it from my side. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope uh, everyone uh, is fine and healthy in this current situation. <laughs> All right. Thank you. OK. So thanks uh, to everyone for introduction. I mean, I was doing some notes and yeah, I'm not obviously terrible at uh, taking notes. So if you see any mistakes or want to add something, just go to the Google doc and uh, yeah, you can uh, put any updates there. And sorry if I missed something or made a mistake. Okay, so we can uh, spend some time discussing various particular areas. So, for example, where would you like to start uh, and how you would like to uh, organize the things? By default, yeah, my recommendation is to start from uh, local events or maybe uh, from uh, online meetups because, uh, yeah, this is the way we meet contributors basically non-stop. The same uh, for technical programs. Though right now we have three programs running in parallel. So we have Google Summer of Code, we have Google Season of Dogs, and we have She Code Africa Hackathon, uh, which strains uh, 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 ORCA means. And if you're interested in any particular area, like documentation, etc., this is also an area where you could help. Right now, yeah, I was rather thinking about local events and online meetups. If you have any questions, if you want to clarify anything about the presentation or deep dive, uh, let's uh, discuss that. If I can just add one advice, uh, which is when organizing events, it's always a good thing to try to identify someone who can help you. 
so if you can identify someone local to your I mean lo your community or whatever it's always interesting to have someone with who you can talk and share ideas um, maybe discuss about dates or whatever I mean that's something that helped me a lot I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's totally right. Oleg, you mentioned um, there was a guitar channel. Can you please share the link on the chat? Uh, which one? This doc? These are the guitar, guitar channel, I think. All right. Um, so yes, I can yes. do that. Uh, okay. Here we go. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So in our case, communication channels are a bit scattered. Let's say so. Uh, so yeah, if you go to Jenkins IO chat, um, yeah, you can uh, find that we have a lot of communication channels. We have uh, Gitter became our default, de facto standards. We have uh, Jenkins CI Jenkins, it's basically main channel. Um, then we have a special channel for newcomer contributors where anyone basically can uh, just uh, go there, ask any question, and uh, we will either answer that or help uh, to find a proper channel. Um, we also use IRC for some uh, um, uh, matters. For example, uh, Jenkins release team uses IRC, Jenkins security team kind of uses IRC, and Fastrack team also uses IRC at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I guess it becomes less and less uh, clear what we use with matrix and production. So, but yeah. And we also have some uh, channels in Slack. So, for example, Continuous Delivery Foundation lives in Slack, and uh, there is a special domain for that. Uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation also has its own outreach committee. They have their own uh, Slack channel about meetups. So, if you're interested, you can join that as well. And yeah, some of our sub projects and companies are also located in different channels. For example, there is Jenkins channel in the Kubernetes log, and Jenkins Kubernetes for Kubernetes actually lives in another project. So yeah, it's a bit messy sometimes, uh, but yeah, if you cannot find something, if you have questions, just ask. And there are also various uh, local community chats. For example, I'm leader of Russian speaking Jenkins community. We have uh, chats in Telegram, we have our own meetups, we have had our own mailing list. Uh, so there are such local resources here and there. Um, okay. Um, so, yeah, that's basically what happens with our chats. Uh, for advocacy and outreach, um, we mostly use this chat and the mailing list. In this chat, you can see that maybe half of the messages are related to retweeting, reposting something, and the other half of the messages are basically various discussions about events. So probably we'll split this channel eventually, but yeah, basically any matters with events can be freely discussed there. So I have a question. So okay. may I? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so regarding the IRC channels, so uh, these uh, these discussions, uh, so contributors discussions, uh, mainly go on the slash Jenkins channel, or I am a member of the slash Jen as Jenkins. So th these type of discussions, contributors discussions, also go on this channel, or there is a separate uh, IRC channel for that. So when I started contributing to Jenkins, uh, the most of the discussions uh, were happening in this RC channel. What's going on? Okay. So I'm using RC Cloud, but yeah, this is basically a Jenkins uh, channel on a free node. So you can uh, join it using any client. Um, so you can see that there are some discussions happening there. There are also some, some other Jenkins related meetings. But historically it happened that uh, many projects in some projects and special interest groups uh, move to Gitter or Slack. Um, so now it's a bit more difficult. So if you ask whether all the developer discussions happen here, the answer is no. Um, yeah, now so if, yeah. 
I, I, I just wanted to add, so there is a, a specific page on the Jenkins.io website, which is uh, Jenkins.io slash chat. And there you have a list of the different um, communication channel where people talk about on a specific topic. The reason why you have so many different is because you have a lot of different groups, people working on different things and everybody has his preference. So some people would tells you that Slack is awesome, other people don't. Um, and you also have the history, like uh, historically we, we, we were on RC, um, today not everybody uh, use RC anymore. So it really depends on the group uh, of people. Um, if I can advise something, which is element.io. So it's a matrix client, which allows you to have a bridge between Kitter, um, RC or whatever. Um, so just create uh, a matrix an protocol, right? Yeah, that's a matrix protocol. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So you just create an account there and then you can use it. So personally, I'm using it. So I don't really pay attention if I'm on Gitter or, the, or RC. I just, I just have a list of rooms and I just discuss in okay. all of those. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. And, um, otherwise while I'm also the website, you, so you have the Jenkins chat, those are the discussion. You have also the calendar listed on the website. So if you're curious about the future events and yeah, you have a lot of different, um, information also around communities and, um, and other projects. Yeah. So speaking of events, we didn't, uh, dive on that. Uh, so, yeah, in addition to events I briefly listed, which are basically um, events we organize as advocacy and outreach seek or hosted elsewhere, uh, there are also community events. So here we have a calendar, and this calendar basically can add it to your Google Calendar or whatever if you're interested. And there we basically list all community events. So, for example, this meeting is here, computer onboarding. This is a public calendar, so anyone can technically uh, join a, any session, well, at least the most of them, and you can find all of them here. So you can basically navigate and see what happened and when. So we are distributed across multiple time zones. So some meetings happen, for example, at one room for me. Uh, so I cannot really participate, um, but yeah, it's how it happens. And yeah, you can just uh, find all the meetings here. For example, advocacy and outreach is also listed. So if you want to join, you just subscribe to the calendar, add it to your calendar, and that's it. Hello, Oleg. There seems to be a lot of links. Is there one single link where all of this is documented, or we just have to navigate um, from link yeah, to link? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, because uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons for this meeting uh, to first help you to get onboarded and secondly to aggregate something in a single location so for example yeah i started this uh, slide deck so i will be sharing that and maybe converting some of these uh, notes uh, to the documentation so how to find uh, things right now so for events we have jenkins slash events and it also links to online meetups to local meetups contributor summits uh, here uh, we also have um, yeah participate uh, with meet and again, there, if you go, you can find um, uh, links to various events from this page. And this is a page a different one to extend. And, uh, yeah. If you want to contribute something, patch according uh, to our discussion, uh, patching the Jenkins documentation is very easy. You click improve this page and you end up uh, in GitHub, uh, where basically you can edit this page in ASCII doc and then submit a pull request. So, if you see so, a paper, if you want to add uh, uh, something to the page, it's just one minute of work and that's it. So to answer your question, there is no one single page where you have a free link. There is still room for improvement. And basically, it really depends on the initiative. So different initiatives have, have different um, maturity. Um, and so if, if you identify a place where you don't have enough information, um, just feel free to open the PR with the, the info, uh, with additional information. And it's also interesting to, I mean, it's even more interesting to contribute when you're looking for any information that you can't find because um, when you work on something for quite a long time, you tend to miss uh, those information, which are not I mean, of use all the time. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Olivia. 
Yeah, we are slowly running out of time, but I can stay for another half an hour um, if you want to deep dive uh, to other topics. So, yeah, we can continue if you want. So, any other questions, comments, or would you like to start from something uh, particular? Maybe yeah, since uh, man referenced our last chapter, uh, one of uh, opportunities we use in the advocacy and outreach stick is actually sharing information, share and content, including uh, contacts of potential potential speakers. Because yeah, for many event organizers, one of the difficulties is to actually uh, find someone uh, who would be presenting. And for example, if we talk about our last uh, chapter, yesterday one of our colleagues and fellow Jenkins contributors was doing a presentation about Defect Doja, which is uh, one of our last projects. So for example, if you want uh, Fred to present at your meetup, you can just ping us and we can help. And uh, yeah, it's what we are doing sometimes uh, in the chats so that uh, uh, we uh, many of us have uh, contacts, no contributors. And if you're looking for something, we again can help each other uh, so that uh, we have speakers and we have uh, more presentations happening. Okay, I will definitely. Yeah, yeah for that, uh, maybe actually using uh, advocacy and outreach or CDF Slack is the best option because for CDF Slack, uh, there are actually multiple projects. So Continuous Delivery Foundation includes six projects at the moment, Jenkins, Jenkins X, Spinnaker, Tecton, plus Artilius and Screwdriver.io. So if you join uh, this channel, basically there is a shared pool uh, of uh, projects and also uh, event organizers from different uh, member companies. So we, if you think that you can uh, get even uh, more responses. Okay. So, anything else? One question I wanted to discuss is actually how do we organize next? Because, yeah, there is a lot of opportunities. Uh, for many things, you can just get started. So, for example, uh, if you want to host something, we could do it together right away. If you want to speak about Jenkins, if you want uh, to just uh, contribute to one of the pending uh, outreach programs, it's something uh, we can do easily. Um, if you want uh, to start from something else, then yeah, let's discuss that. I mean, we will be happy to help you with anything. So yeah, hello. Uh, so from my part, I can say I can help in the organizing events and uh, other things uh, with the community regarding organizing the events and uh, things. I have to learn from uh, from those who are organizing right now as well, but I can try my best to help in the organizing of the events as well. Yeah, that's the objective. So we do not uh, just want to just throw some of our tasks over the wall. Um, yeah, many of us are quite experienced event organizers, so we can just share experiences, share best practices between each other. Uh, and yeah, definitely. Get some yeah. events happening, yeah, that's great. For example, how we could do that, we could just have more or less regular office hours like this one, but yeah, without slides and focusing on particular topics as one option. Another option is that we do everything asynchronously through chats and just have events, for example, these meetings on demand. What would be your preference? So is there any upcoming meetups already organized or like that? You know, we can, I mean, if you're already organizing, we can um, okay. actually learn from that. Like how we are yeah, so for meetups, um, yeah, right now we do not have um, any meetups announced. I have a few mm -hmm. online meetups in the pipeline. So for example, uh, about uh, the phone client plugin, about Jenkins Kubernetes operator. Hopefully we'll have something else. We have other regular sessions. So I hope that uh, within the next two weeks, we will have at least one meetup. 
Oleg, do you, Oleg, do you think it would be okay if, for instance, in this in this meetup that I'm about to propose with Uli Hoffner, the the format is going to be sort of a a discussion format. If one of mm -hmm. the the if Arvind or Himadri or in in Dubusi would like to be co-host with me, I would happily include them as co-host in the in my abstract proposal. Are are any of you interested in that kind of thing? It would typically be towards end of the day in Europe. So roughly, well, oh dear, what time does that make UTC? Um, well, usually it's around 4 p.m. UTC. Right. Two hours. So if, if any of you are interested in being co-hosts, it's not uncommon that I co-host with Oleg, but I would love to co-host with one of the, someone else. Aravind, is that a hand raise that I see? Um, but, I so, but no, it's not what does it mean being a cause or what in yeah, this so, case? So, oh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry for that. But I just want to know that what will be the timing uh, of that uh, co-hosting and what will be the timing of that event? So, so because due to the, yeah, 4 p.m. Due to the work and other uh, things. 9.30 yeah. p.m. IST. Yeah. Exactly. So the, the challenge there is the IST, IST time. And so we may want to look for other other times that would work better IST. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the thought for me was we, we do it at 4 p.m. UTC so that it fits with Uli's schedule. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not available, we could consider alternate times because we need to reach more places than just um, Europe and Africa and the mm -hmm. Eastern US. So I'm open, I'm open to others. I'd have to negotiate with Uli. Uh, to see when he's available, he is definitely okay. he is based in Germany. Okay, so 4 so, p.m. UTC means I think it is it will be 9:30 p.m. IST, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, it's it will be around 9:30. Yeah, yeah, it's it will be okay for me. You have already seen uh, a doodle poll I've started for this event. And basically, this is our approach. So the lead organizer uh, chooses a number of slots, uh, basically based on the availability. And mm -hmm. then we just run a poll. And when we see the best match, then we just uh, say that, that, OK, this is the time. So we don't have uh, fixed uh, time slots uh, for events. We just organize at Fox based on uh, availability of participants. Uh, the only reason why we talk about 4 p.m. UTC is just because it's time uh, where we generally have uh, the biggest audience. But again, it's not the case, for example, for local meetups. If you want to organize something for India, then you, you'll do it uh, on the morning UTC, maybe. If you okay. want to organize something for the United States or in Australia, it will be a completely different time. And we are not limited for that. Our platform is available 24-7. So it really depends on hosts and on target audience. And we choose a time when we want. Um, okay, uh, what about uh, uh, co-host? Uh, just to explain, uh, when you host a meetup, uh, there are multiple threads to be handled. Uh, so for example, um, yeah, there is a presenter who does the presentation. And usually uh, there is also a host uh, who monitors this presentation, maintains the discussion. So for example, uh, taking questions from their audience. Uh, um, okay. Questions, introducing speaker. Uh, yeah, so we quite commonly do meetups together with Mark. Uh, and they think that you cannot really do a meetup alone because when you screen share, you cannot track the questions, you cannot track feedback. For example, you lose the network, etc. And uh, a common practice is to have at least two people. So one is doing the presentation, another one hosting. So again, introductions, taking questions, just moderating the things uh, and monitoring the things. For example, when something goes wrong, uh, to fix the platform, um, et cetera. And also what hosts do the non-sync events. Uh, is, uh, at the last minute. For example, yeah, we are ready to start the meetup. Somebody has to post in Twitter that yeah, we are about to start. Please join us so that we get some last minute uh, participants. 
the same, for example, um, we do this uh, various other activities. Uh, plus, as a uh, event co-host, you uh, might be taking some notes. So some events uh, uh, taking notes, uh, like these ones or whatever, maybe doing some transcripts. Um, also, sometimes just taking uh, screenshots, photos, uh, again, for example, for social media, etc., uh, and so on. So there are multiple activities. And uh, when we have uh, three people participating, so one speaker and two hosts, usually it's more convenient. And that's why Mark is, uh, has mentioned co-host, so that uh, this uh, uh, work can be parallelized. And again, if something happens, uh, for example, if host uh, goes offline because of network breaks, etc., there is another host available. So, so that, that just to come back to my advice earlier uh, during this call, like if you organize an event, it's always more comfortable to have someone that you can rely on. So if you have something unexpected that happened, that person will take care of that. And so, I mean, in, and if it's a really big event, sometimes it's even better to have maybe two, three person who can help you. Um, sometimes those people just do nothing because everything goes well. Um, but yeah, most of the time it's always useful to, to, to be able to rely on other people. Yeah. Also, we currently use Zoom webinar for the most of the events. And there, there is uh, an opportunity to ask questions for the audience. And basically for some questions we do, I think, uh, Q&A. So, we keep the most of relevant questions to the speaker so that we discuss them online when the speaker is available. So for example, the host asks questions uh, in the middle of the presentation, uh, if presenter prefers so, or after the presentation. But some questions, they might be not relevant to the presentation or they might be trivial, etc. And the host can uh, just answer them as we go uh, so that uh, we can cover these questions and not spend too much time on Q&A. The end. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And another thing which is popular, for example, uh, for contributor summits is just uh, hosting breakout rooms. Uh, because, for example, when we do contributor summits, well, we did the contributor summit online only once in February, but then we had uh, breakout rooms. And in breakout rooms, again, we need moderators. So in such case, having two hosts uh, might be not enough. And the next event uh, will be in uh, June, and uh, the big one. So yeah, again, uh, they having to more contributors would be definitely great. Okay. Uh, does it answer your question, Vakram? What? Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, it's just a brain dump. Uh, so. Yeah, there are events happening here and there, but definitely there are many things uh, where you could contribute. And uh, when will this uh, meeting take place? The one that I was proposing is currently tentatively the first week in May or the second week in May. So two mm -hmm. to three weeks from now. Uh, we we've generally seen that it's best for us to have at least two weeks notice before we schedule a, a meetup to get best attendance. Online events, one week is also okay, mm -hmm. uh, but it's usually one to two weeks. So we don't uh, announce meetup uh, with a few months advance. For example, in Switzerland, it's common that people announce the meetup with half a year advance. I still cannot understand how they do that. Uh, yeah. I guess it's not to realize, but yeah, in our case, we can announce meetup is really low advance. For example, if there is a talk topic, etc. So I guess once we are gonna announce it with two days advance, and still we got quite good audience. But yeah, we try to do some advance because yeah, many people uh, do their own planning, and obviously such a talk sessions are not very convenient. Uh, I think uh, I can try. Uh, my English Excellent. is not so good, but uh, <laughs> I will do my best. By the way, do you speak Russian? Rahman? Yeah, да, конечно. Oh. So, yeah, we could do something together for Jenkins' role. 
It works. Is, so we have uh, five Russian speaking meetups. Mm -hmm. uh, four in Russia, one in Belarus. We also had online meetups, for example, for Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. And if you want, we can just uh, organize something together. Yes, of course. It's in my uh, own term of whole of shame, but I don't want to organize Jenkins through meetups. Oh, that's great. Okay. And Oleg, I apologize. I have to drop for another meeting. Thank you very much for organizing this, Varam. Watch for my um, request to the advocacy and outreach mailing list. Mm -hmm. I'll likely mention your name as a possible co-host and mm -hmm. uh, the abstract should come out within the next one or two days. Okay. Yep. So okay. in our case, we try to do the most uh, through mailing lists because they supposedly more synchronous than chat. Uh, now with Slack, actually, for example, at our work, uh, yeah, we mostly use Slack instead of mailing keys, but in the community, we still prefer mailing keys. And uh, then you yeah, again just go to advocacy and outreach. So, okay. so again, for many pages, you can just find the links on the right because we try to somehow organize uh, our chat mess. And yeah, here uh, there is a mailing list. So you can see that uh, there are some uh, events happening there. Uh, and for example, when Mark is ready, he will just uh, send a message here so that uh, we could uh, discuss it. So, for example, last uh, online meetup we had, we, um, yeah, uh, we had a new Jenkins LCS release and they, we did a presentation with all the clear features. So basically, Mark sent a proposal to the mailing list with abstract, etc. And we have the process and it was published uh, on our website and then we hosted it. So you can see that uh, there were some back in the course uh, during the review. And yeah, finally it was uh, hosted on our online meetup, but we tried to do some reviews asynchronously and we collaborate a lot, for example, through Google Doc or through other platforms. Olivia currently at all South uh, HackMD uh, for Jenkins infrastructure. You can also switch uh, to HackMD for meetups, I guess, because it would be convenient. Mm, so let's see. And if you have an idea, then you can uh, just uh, make a proposal here or, or, or well, uh, just uh, subscribe to the events so that you don't miss announcements. Mm. Yeah. So, regarding the rest, um, yeah, for other upcoming events, as I said, we have three other meetups in the pipeline. So, basically, how it happens when we have a speaker, we try to organize a meetup. So we have a call for papers, a kind of it here plus mailing list. So we advise uh, potential speakers to just write a short Google Doc and send a message to the mailing list and then we review everything in the mailing list. And then once we are ready, once we select a time through Doodle, we just organize the event. So yeah, you can participate in this process right now. There is no hidden parts. Everything happens in public and yeah. You can just contribute if you have an idea about posting your event, etc. We can do the same. Okay. Any other questions? So uh, I just want to know that uh, if a new contributor has some any queries or anything, uh, so what will be the best communication channel? Uh, it's IRC or Gitter or what will be the best communication channel to discuss? Um, so I recommend mailing list for synchronous discussions. So for example, if you plan a long conversation, mm -hmm. if you want to make a proposal, if you want to get reviews, etc. If you just mm -hmm. have a quick question, so for example, how I do something, um, it's better to do it in GitHub. Okay. Because okay. Yeah, you just ask and then you quickly get a feedback, no need to start the mailing list for everything. Mm -hmm. And and uh, these type of online uh, online discussions and other things will continue to happen for helping uh, other new contributors and contributors like uh, uh, all of us who uh, attended this event. So this type of uh, online, I it, it's it's my suggestion that this type of online discussions need to be done uh, in an interval so that uh, the new contributors can get a glimpse of how to contribute more or uh, what are the other things they can contribute. I think that will be helpful for uh, every one of you. 
us who are new. So this is just a suggestion from my side. So definitely not every week, but for example, every two weeks, every month, we can meet, uh, share experiences, uh, just in live mode. Uh, there are two options actually. Mm -hmm. One option is to use existing tag office in our Chish seek meeting. Uh, and another option is to have a separate event like this one. So depending on uh, what you prefer, we can uh, choose any of the options. But uh, yeah, if you take a look at um, advocacy and artistic uh, program, nowadays it's also mostly about uh, different uh, events. So for example, last week we had a meeting with the three people there, uh, but sometimes with much more. But here yeah, we were discussing CDCon, including various events like Contributor Summit, uh, both. Uh, then uh, there was a discussion about Spinnaker Summit because there was some confusion after it was promoted uh, through Jenkins Meetup groups. And, uh, there is ongoing work on Schwag bundles, uh, of community events, organizing, so this is meeting. So, one of the most natural ways for you is to actually just uh, join existing advocacy and outreach seek meeting. And if you have anything, you can uh, just add it to the agenda. So, your next meeting will be on April 22nd. Uh, if you want, uh, you just uh, make a suggestion in this Google Doc. It it's open for suggestions. So for example, if you want to discuss any topic related to advocacy and outreach, you just uh, edit here and that's it. And yeah, if needed, we can have separate sessions. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure what's your preference. If the time is fine for you, it's... Uh, yeah, so we say that we alternate in two different time slots, but actually we don't do it anymore. Uh, so right now it happens at 4 p.m. UTC for the call for every two weeks. But yeah, we can find the other slots. Again, it basically depends on contributors. Okay, so so regarding uh, the 22nd April, uh, so uh, it will again, you share the time slots or? Uh, it will be the same time. Yeah, you mean for this meeting? Uh, no, for the next meeting. Uh, so advocacy and outreach uh, seek meeting is fixed. So you can go to the events calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, the next meeting uh, is happening um, on yeah. So it's uh, Thursday, April twenty second, and it's four pm UTC. But uh, yeah, again, if uh, time is not comfortable, we can find a separate meeting slot or we can probably adjust this meeting because it's not like these meetings uh, are fixed completely. You just agree as a group of contributors how you want to do that. So if there are more contributors who prefer a different time, we can adjust. Okay. So Regarding this time, is it fine with you, or would you prefer to have a separate sync up meeting? Oh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's okay for me. It's okay for myself. Yeah. And for others, four p.m. is yeah, four p.m. UTC is fine with me. Mm -hmm. It's nine thirty p.m. So yeah, that works for me. Yeah, that should be fine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, keep this time uh, attentively. So I will uh, sync up this from separately because yeah, if we organize Jenkins through, there is another set of channels. Um, and yeah, if you need to organize something specifically for event organizers, again, let's uh, discuss together in the chat. So we can organize these meetings ad hoc. Yeah, everyone of us has other full-time job, uh, but yeah, we still can find the time or agree asynchronously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's basically advocacy and outreach. And yeah. Anything else for today? 
I'm um, good. Thank you. Thank you for this session. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's really helpful. It cleared up a lot of uh, questions I had in your presentation even before. No, I had to ask you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. And again, if you have any questions, just ask in the chat. No need to wait. And yeah, hopefully it will be a great experience for everyone. Just yeah, definitely. definitely. And thank mm -hmm. everyone for the time and be safe and be healthy. <laughs> yeah. We just so, uh, share a lot of information. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks. So, bye. Looking forward to meeting you again. Bye. See you guys.